Um, and that, um, and there was more. He went into detail, drew an analogy of, of his own son, uh, Dante, who obviously many people in New York grew familiar with during his campaign, um, and said he worried night after night about him coming home safely. You can imagine the reaction from the NYPD um, uh, in the coming days. Um, and there certainly is a division between seemingly the mayor's office uh, and police plaza on this. We'll get into that more, and, and as I said, we'll bring in Dominic. But I want to bring in uh, Andrew Whitman right now, who's been following some of the reaction on this, and it's really far and wide uh, from from statewide officials who are demanding that DOJ gets involved to regular people that are frustrated to some people think that justice was uh, done today by that grand jury. And we want to focus on the public officials, which we've heard from a lot of them. Uh, Sam Liebman mentioned that Dan Donovan released a statement but has not spoken. Dan Donovan uh, releasing that statement saying that after deliberation, the grand jury found that there was no reasonable cause to vote an indictment. New York law forbids a DA from disclosing grand jury info only upon uh, compelling and particular need for uh, access. He also said that he's filed uh, with a court to try to see if he can, in fact, release some of the information from the grand jury. We've also heard from uh, both U.S. senators from New York, both calling for federal investigations uh, and the Justice Department to get into the uh, investigation as well. We've also heard from Eric Schneiderman, the uh, attorney general for the state of New York, who says his thoughts go out to uh, the Garner family, but is calling for a peaceful response. Now, uh, we also heard from Governor Cuomo in the last hour. He released a statement at the same time that Mayor de Blasio was speaking, saying a federal investigation may be warranted, certainly much softer than de Blasio. As for New York's congressional delegation, they were far less reserved. Yep. We'll get into some of their comments a little bit later, I, Rich. I saw what Hakeem Jeffries, Charlie Rangel, and others say it really was something else. All right. Uh, now, what we're going to do over the course of the next hour is focus nothing but what happened today or didn't happen today on Staten Island. And uh, we're going to bring you into our conversation as well. Toll-free lines open right now, 38-766-2428. Uh, we've gotten some terrific calls. Uh, we've gotten calls from law enforcement on Staten Island for their perspectives. We've gotten uh, perspectives from people who have talked about their own personal experiences, whether it be with stop and frisk or a complicated relationship with law enforcement, and for everyone in between. And we really welcome uh, an open forum for you to sound off. Uh, but I want to bring in our panel right now, who's been great throughout this process, both even before the Ferguson decision and now in the run-up to this. Um, and let's go around the table. Jimmy Kasuris, criminal defense attorney in Manhattan, lecturing at New York Law School, also a visiting professor at the University of Birmingham in England. He also a former prosecutor in New York City, Doug Von Oist, founding partner of Carson Von Oist, fo focusing on corporate misconduct, selected by Legal 500 as one of the most influential trial lawyers in the nation. He also a former prosecutor out on the island in Suffolk County. Mayo Bartlett, attorney and former prosecutor, in fact, former chief of the Bias Crimes Unit in Westchester County's DA's office. And Jason Leventhal, former uh, founding partner, excuse me, of Leventhal and Klein. And he, a former ADA, in fact, in the Richmond County DA's office, the same DA's office that um, prosecuted uh, this case, or at least brought it to uh, the grand jury, and Mr. Donovan, in fact, his old boss. Okay. Uh, I spoke to you um, in the 5 o'clock hour. Jason, will start and go around. Surprised or not surprised uh, by uh, the decision not to have an indictment? Um, and again, I'll take it from the non-attorney at the table, along with Andrew, even though we play some on TV. Um, the video, I thought, um, screamed that it would have reached that threshold of a lesser included, especially when you had the mayor and the police commissioner in the immediate aftermath saying that it didn't seem to follow police protocol. You had the ME who said, uh, ruled a homicide here. It seemed that there was enough, that there was video evidence, maybe not at a trial, but certainly to get an indictment at a grand jury. Obviously, uh, I was wrong. And you told me at five you weren't surprised. Why not? Well, certainly the evidence was enough to get an indictment. Uh, but I'm not surprised because knowing the makeup of that grand jury, knowing the makeup of the Staten Island community, uh, how pro-police they are, uh, how many civil servants live in Staten Island that are also pro-police, and knowing the district attorney, Dan Donovan, and knowing that he uh, received a number of uh, uh, endorsements from law enforcement unions, has always been very close with law enforcement. Uh, and then watching how this played out over, over two months, uh, a number of witnesses put into the grand jury. Now, that's not typical. Typically, a prosecutor seeks an indictment 
puts a very streamlined case with their best evidence into the grand jury, uh, seeking to procure that indictment. Here, something different happened. Mayor? I agree 100%, and I think that it, it makes you, again, go back and revisit something we've talked about on numerous occasions. Uh, I think that when there's a death at the hands of the police, there should be an independent investigator, and there should be an independent prosecutor because it's difficult to ask a police department to investigate its own, and the grand jury is saddled only with the information that it gets from that investigation. And to that point, Mayo, this isn't necessarily theoretical. I was surprised to learn that under Governor Cuomo, former Governor Cuomo, Mario, the father, independent prosecutors were more the norm, not the exception, right? Um, how does it work where you take the DA off the hook in many ways? Could the governor have said, wait a minute here, guys, there's too many conflicting interests potentially here. Let's eliminate the veil of conflict of interest for any bit, even if it's not real. We're going to get an independent prosecutor. Could the governor have done that? Well, the governor could have done that, and our governor has proven uh, time and time again that he will not do that. And in fact, even in cases where the mayor, the chief of police, uh, and the district attorney are asking for an independent prosecutor, as in the Michael Limhart case in Newburgh, uh, Governor Cuomo has refused that request. And you have to stop and take a step back and say, why on earth would the mayor, the district attorney, and the chief of police ask for an independent prosecutor unless they thought it would be uh, best for their community? So he refused to give them that, op that option. And really, I think in the process, uh, created situations that could be that uh, similar to what happened in Ferguson. Mm. An independent prosecutor gives everybody uh, a breath of fresh air. It gives them the possibility that things are going to be uh, more transparent, that there is less on the table. You're not worried about running for election and getting the endorsement of the police union. You're not worried about whether uh, the people in the community, to your point, who may be pro-police are going to vote for you. Jimmy? I, I have to agree that I'm not, I'm not surprised. Uh, I am surprised or I'm disappointed in the face of what I thought was uh, uh, some pretty compelling evidence for a lesser included offense. And I think people are understandably upset. The one component that was here that I thought just continually got overlooked was the prior relationship. It's not only the chokehold, which has been banned for 24 years. It's not only the, 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 the video, which clearly shows what happened. But, and our caller from last week actually brought this up. They were tired of this guy been arrested 30 times. He was a thorn in their side. From their perspective, he wouldn't stop. And they took him down. And, and if you put all of that together, I actually think that a federal investigation is warranted in this case, whereas if you asked me the same thing about the Ferguson matter, I would tell you the feds wouldn't go near the Ferguson matter. So I'm not surprised for all the aforesaid reasons, but I'm disappointed. You know, Doug, I always think of the human component, which is why wouldn't a grand jury just say, I don't need this in my life. I saw what happened in Ferguson. Give it to a jury to do. Now, I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, but we're talking about human people, uh, human beings. 24 people, I believe, we said the math was, or something uh, that was the makeup of this. Everybody saw the video. Um, now, maybe, again, I'm not the, the, the proposing that I'm the expert here on the lawn. What, was it a chokehold? Was it not a chokehold? Did he resist? Did he not resist? Or did, were there other contributing factors like his health that led to this and all the rest? Maybe he would have been cleared at trial. But just enough that the DA would have said, you know what, let's just get it to a trial. Let the jury figure it out. Uh, and then them say, you know what, we saw the video. Let's do a lesser included. Nobody thinks he murdered him, right? But... Obviously, it didn't happen. Uh, these three guys say, doesn't surprise me. Does it surprise you? Well, the video is obviously shocking, but it doesn't surprise me. Grand jurors take their job very seriously. I mean, we don't know exactly what happened in that grand jury room. We'd have to, we'd have to be there to know what happened. By the way, practically, will we find out? Will those grand jurors who aren't subjected I, to a gag order talk about how the process worked or not? I don't think we would. I mean, you, it's, it's designed that way that we're not supposed to find out for the person that's the subject of the grand jury as well as the grand jurors. But listen, we're talking about the criminal world here. We're talking about intentional conduct or reckless conduct that rises to intent. Um, there's a whole other world that's going to be explored now, and that's the civil world, uh, the lawsuit that's brought by the family. Could it be that that's where this is supposed to be? It could be. You know, interesting, Richard. Uh, D.A. Donovan has applied to unseal part of this grand jury, mm -hmm. and we, we may have more information mm -hmm. soon. Where's the particularized well, need, though? I mean, we ask for it all the time. <laughs> right. 
quick update. The multiple sources now reporting that the Justice Department will launch a civil rights investigation into the Garner uh, chokehold death. Thank you. And uh, stay with me, Andrew. When we come back, uh, we're getting more reaction on this. And at 7.30, Reverend Sharpton uh, is expected to have his press conference. It'll be very interesting uh, what he says and where the protests go from here. There has been a plea for uh, calm in terms of protests, but of the nonviolent. We've seen no indication to the contrary to this point. Um, but uh, when we come back from the break, we're going to bring you into our conversation as well. We'll also show you more live images of the aftermath of the decision not to indict Officer Pantaleo uh, in that Staten Island case. We'll be right back with much more. Stay with us.